why do some fat people hate being called obese? Well, the answer to that is that sometimes the word obese or obesity medicalizes fat bodies, sometimes in the absence of any actual medical problem. Being fat is a medical problem, especially being obese. So 100%, if people are calling you obese, it's directly correlating to the fact that you are unhealthy. That's literally what they're going for. So yes, it's probably really offensive to call somebody that, but simultaneously, it's in the name. You are unhealthy. And I know these people have this a weird idea that being obese somehow doesn't have a correlation to being unhealthy because you're not directly seeing the, the, the cause and effect of being that obese body. You might see like effects in a very subtle way, like joint problems or knee problems with people will like fundamentally just put up with that stuff. Like they'll just accept that this is just the new them. And that usually these issues don't arise all at once usually. So it's like, you gain 10 to 20 pounds, you start feeling a little bit of pressure usually. And then after that 50 pound mark, you do start feeling pain. But usually that 50 pounds took like a year or three years to put on. So you're not actually feeling it all at once. It's like the analogy of putting on sunblock, right? Like you don't see the effects of wearing sunblock immediately. But in like 10 years, when you wear sunblock every day for 10 years, but this person that you know doesn't wear sunblock for 10 years, you're going to look significantly younger compared to that person who probably looks like Jabba the Hutt in the face now or Keith Sutherland in the face right now. You know, like RIP Keith Sutherland, by the way, he just died today as of the time that he's making this video. But uh, the point I'm making is like, even though you're not seeing the issues with obesity right now and then, it doesn't mean that those issues aren't there. I mean, obviously, being fat in general is going to cause massive, massive debilitating conditions upon you, literally just taxing your health bar every second of the day, but also because you're going to be experiencing like a ton of like systemic issues, which these people love to point out, which <clears throat> I guess are systemic issues, but like in the most basic way of saying it, like, oh, yes, yeah, stairs exist, therefore it's a systemic issue, I guess true like society incentivizes people to walk upstairs i'm sorry those those exist the word obesity comes from the bmi but the bmi or body mass index is a weak and oftentimes inaccurate predictor of both present and future health but the bmi can apply to like 99 percent of people there are only a few people on the world that it doesn't apply for like if you're a professional bodybuilder or you carrying around like a ton of extra muscle then it probably doesn't apply to you like if you're an ifbb pro you're probably not going to apply or if you're missing an arm but even if you're missing an arm or a leg or like certain appendages there is a bmi that specifically is dedicated to those particular demographics of people so for 99 percent of people the bmi will give you a relatively accurate idea of where you are in terms of your body fat percentages and yes it's not for everybody but then again it's never supposed to be for everybody like not everything is made for everybody obviously like stairs are not made for fat people yet you still see them complaining about it so if you want to find out where your bmi is it's okay to take a bmi test put in your numbers calculate your shit out that's roughly where you're at like give or take 10 or 15 pounds sorry 10 give or take like one or two percent in in every direction whatever direction that is that's roughly where you're at so if it comes back with 30 or 40 that's roughly where you're at and i understand that it's not like a good idea like i remember one time i was talking to my friend and he was like ah you know i'm six foot two i do weigh like 300 some change pounds but like i'm a big guy so i'm like not technically obese so we did it right then and there we went into the bmi and we put in his shit and guess what he came out as obese and you know what he did that next day he got a gym membership because he realized he was like he was actually genuinely shocked when he found that bmi he's like oh my god i'm act that mean i'm actually obese like that's an actual problem dave and i was like yeah and you smell bad which is obviously not a good thing so he went to the gym that net very next day and got a calorie deficit i mean it didn't work for him in the long term because he went on a very very strict calorie deficit and it wasn't very sustainable but even still um, it does put things into context and you get a little bit more information about your body and I understand that it's not good information like nobody wants to see where they're actually at unless you like are good in your, your own like size or whatever but yes it's a very good piece of information to know where your BMI is. But of course, they don't like it also because the guy that made it was like a racist or something like that, which by the way, the guy that invented cars was also racist. Did you get did you know that? Yeah. So you're going to stop driving your cars? Fuck no. When fat bodies are medicalized, it encourages doctors and other healthcare professionals to attribute all maladies of the body to a person's weight. After all, if fatness itself is the disease, then everything must be a result of fatness. Not everything. I'm sure that, like, you can have conditions that are 
it's it's just so interesting because like okay if you have like pre-existing conditions like core morbidities then like obviously being fat is going to negatively affect those as well because being fat in general is going to be like negatively deep is going to be debuffing your health bar like that's the way i like to look at it like if you were playing a video game being fat is going to tick down on your health bar at any given point in time but it's also deeper than that because you know and i know i've met a plenty of women that were very very overweight or obese and they had absolutely no periods like some of these women i knew literally wouldn't have periods for three or four months at a time and when they did have their period it would either be uh like extreme blood for like a month or it would literally just happen for two days and it would never come back for like another three months which is really really tragic and i know that a lot of fatter women or a lot of obese women literally have fertility issues in general so think about this when you are very very overweight your body is taxed in ways that you don't know like if you're very very fat obviously your body's probably gonna look at the fact that you have your egg sac and go why the fuck are we supporting this shit this bitch is literally on life support right now let's shut this let's shut this off for now and try to keep her alive in these other places that are way more important than giving birth i mean we don't even need to do that right now this girl is so fat that you think she's gonna have any type of sex no we'll shut off the egg sac and we'll try to maintain like homeostasis for everything else even though this woman is like feeding us tons and tons of disgusting oversaturated foods we're just gonna keep try to keep her alive as best as possible that's basically what's going on with your health um so even if you have other illnesses and things like that most of the time those illnesses are still going to be literally way worse because you're obese so it's not even good to be fat in general let alone obese obese is like crazy dude you're literally obese by definition is literally meaning that it's killing you this can oftentimes lead to medical discrimination. And yeah, like when you're fat or obese, you you won't be able to get certain procedures or you won't be able to get certain like, for instance, uh, if you were very obese and you needed like, for instance, I don't know, like lung transplants or like a liver transplant or heart transplant, um, you, good luck. You're not getting that shit because guess what? You have shown these doctors or the people in this facility that you don't already even care about the organs that you have in general that were given to you by your deity or your mother or whatever. So why the fuck would we give you this heart or whatever the fuck knowing that you're just going to probably abuse it already? It's like a guy that's like an alcoholic and he destroyed his liver thinking that he's going to get another liver even though he hasn't booted the condition or like stopped drinking. You're just going to destroy the liver again. So no, we're not going to give you that shit. It's the same thing there. So when I see people saying like medical discrimination, sometimes like this, these, these forms of discriminations are like... I understand what you're saying, but you really got to put this stuff in context because it's not as cut and dry as like, oh, I'm discriminated against because the doctor didn't like perform surgery on me. Dude, like you're literally so obese that like if they put you on anesthesia, you may not wake up like that's literally a complication. So I understand what you're saying, but we need a little bit more context, a little bit more context a lot of the time. And when fat people observe that they are discriminated against in medical settings, it can cause them to avoid going to the doctor, which can cause them to not be diagnosed with illnesses as soon as they should be. I think that I see this a lot in the male, the male community. Like a lot of dudes have this weird way of thinking that they're just going to get over their particular sickness or illness just because I see it a lot, dude. I see a lot of dudes that like have consistent issues or bodily functions that are just not working optimally. And I always go, why don't you go to the doctor? And they're like, nah, dude, I don't need to go to the doctor. What are you talking about, dude? I, it's going to go away. It's like, it's going to go away tomorrow, the next day. And then you talk to them like, how long have you had this issue? And they'll go two months. <laughs> like I hear that a lot. I talk to a lot of guys and they tell me that shit all the time. And even I, I remember literally having a joint problem with my wrist on um, both of my wrists. And I just thought it was going to go away. I just literally thought it was just going to be like, whatever, like, but this was in my earlier 20s. So I was like 21, 22. And I just kind of imagined that after a little bit of time, it would just go away or it was going to dissipate or I was going to hit like an apex and it was going to like slowly, but surely the pain was going to go away. But after one month, I realized it wasn't going away. And I would ask my friends, I would literally call them up like, Hey guys, listen, I have this pain, um, on my, on my wrists, like consistently on both wrists. Like, what do you think I should do? And they would just hit me with, stop beating off, David. You got to stop beating your meat. Like, you keep beating your meat. And I'm just thinking, like, I'm dying. Like, my hands are literally probably going to fall off. And it was, like, 10 out of 10 pain. Like, I had literal um, agonizing pain on my hand anytime I did anything at all. And I'm a gamer. So picking up a controller was literally, like, life-changing for me. I was, like, fucking dying inside because I couldn't play video games optimally. But anyway, 
I went to the doctor and they just gave me some braces and then within two weeks it was good. The point I'm making is like a lot of times it is really, really important for people to just go to the doctor because most of the time it's really not even anything at all and it could just be remedied inside of like one session and a lot of people just don't do that. Or even if like you can catch something early. Like I remember one time I had like a, a lump on my nuts and I decided that I'd go to the doctor and I did and it turns out that it was nothing, which is great. But the point I'm making is like if it was something, at least I got it checked on and I would have been able to do something about it right then and there. You understand? Like a lot of people just don't go to the doctors. But if we're talking about things like this where it's like, oh, I'm so fat. My doctor just told me that I should lose weight. That's medical discrimination. Therefore, I'm never going to go again. What do you even want then? Like it, you do you want the doctor to just lie to you? Like you go in with joint problems and you think this guy's going to like diagnose you with some other thing when most of the time it has to do with you being fat. Like I understand it. I get it. I really do. But it's just really dumb and really stupid to think about it like that. This time of year, especially for fat people, I have talked about this before, but there is like, there can be a history. I, I love the title, dude. Fat Bitch Summer. Beautiful. Well, I have talked about this before, but there is like, there can be a historical or collective trauma when it starts turning to be warmer or start talking about summer more often because <laughs> as fat people, we have just been so hated for so long and summer usually brings less clothing stench usually like okay if it's really really hot outside organically being a person that's already in a good body size i sweat and maybe i stench a little bit like you probably smell a little bit like i don't know dude maybe i smell like an expired grape or something like that i don't know you probably don't smell the best when you're in summertime because the heat is going to like accumulate on your body now think about all of the fat folds and sweat flaps that you have across your body because you weigh double or triple what you're supposed to weigh it's gonna be it's gonna be like multiplicative 100 percent. so i can see where she's coming from where she's talking about the historical trauma of being fat and in the summertime which is a really crazy way of saying i don't want to like i don't want people to acknowledge i smell really bad or like i'm gonna have to wear less clothes and so people are gonna see my midriff literally poking out coming through the door before they even see my face which is something i see a lot um, by the way, if you have more front than you do back, that's an issue, dude. I'm just going to keep it a buck with you. It's not a good thing to not have a belly button or have your belly button be deeper than your vaginal crevice or have your belly button be deeper than the length of your penis. It's just not good, dude. It's not a flex, not something I would be celebrating, but a lot of people do. So, but I totally see what you're saying. Like a lot of people do frown upon or look down upon people that are very bigger in the summertime. I know I do, dude. I'm walking down the street, seeing very, very big or overweight people like doing this like the other day i was like taking the train on my way back and i saw this woman getting off the train dude and she was so big i swear to god dude i could probably make up 10 steps before she took one i'm not even joking she was out of breath from just like getting up out of the seat and walking out of the train and i thought why would you ever think about like having this be a condition on yourself like i get it food is great food is amazing i i really understand it but to me, I feel like people should be more focused on using the fuel uh, from the food rather than like using it as like a coping mechanism or like a, I really love to eat. Therefore, I'm going to use this as like a means of transporting enjoyment to my brain. Like I get it, but it's also terrible. So people should be using it more so like, okay, what am I going to get out of this? What's the protein intake? What's the carb? What's the fat? No, what am I going to get out of this food instead of eating so much that they literally make their lives harder? Literally, I, I, there's no other way to say it than that. Like if you were going to go to work or if you were going to like do anything, maybe you got to meet up with people, um, you're just going to be like doing things like 10 or 20 times harder than everybody else. Like think about that woman getting off the train, uh, her getting off the train and walking out of the train and like going up the stairs to get onto the street would be taxing beyond belief. But for me, it's no problem. I can walk out of the train and be up, uh, be up on the street inside of like a minute max. But she's probably going to take, I'm not joking with you, five or six minutes because she has to walk up those stairs. She was already huffing and puffing coming out of the train. So I couldn't even imagine what it would be like coming, walking up one, two, three flights of stairs. It's crazy. So, I mean, I guess elevator access exists. But simultaneously, the fact that you have to use that when you could lose weight to make your life better, it just is crazy to me. We did for so long and summer usually brings less clothing or being out in swimsuits or can you imagine being so fat that like when you enter in a pool you just like a spew of brown sludge like coming off around you across the water and the like, kids are screaming you know there's family members like oh my god and there might be a japanese man or like a korean man going godzilla godzilla you know it's gonna be fucking crazy so uh, to me it's you ever see that one video of that dog that went into the water and there was like streams of dirt 
coming off of him because he went into the stream. It was it's probably something like that. That's what I would imagine it would be like. Brings less clothing or being out in swimsuits or you know what that reminds me you guys remember a few years back there was that woman there was a woman i don't know if it was around here i don't know if it was like a story that happened across the nation but there was a woman that literally drowned inside of a pool um like a public pool like one of those big public pools that you can take your fan friends and family to uh, she died in the pool and she like sunk to the bottom of the uh, the bottom of the pool and i guess nobody noticed but her body meat like started to decompose and then it like it made the water like really really murky but people just kind of thought like oh it's just a really cool water texture like people loved it and she was down there for like a week and people were just like swimming in the water of the woman and i guess they loved it but then eventually they found it when they were cleaning it and they were like oh shit yeah there's a dead lady at the bottom of this this water i like did she go by herself like did her family just like forget her you know, like, I don't know, man. It was just, like, it was a whole big thing. And thinking about all the kids. Like, I hope none of the parents actually told their kids that they were swimming in body water. Because that's really traumatizing. And it's going to be pretty tough to explain to, like, a five-year-old. What have you, like, being outside more and being perceived more. And even with all of the work that I've done on myself, even though I've been in the fat liberation space, like, I still feel moments of that historic and collective trauma because you know it's not good probably like you know that being fat has tremendous disadvantages and it's literally negatively affecting your health in ways that you probably don't even understand because you're literally looking the other way kind of like living in a house where it's on fire and you're just like perpetually looking down trying to avoid the fire or like that's what basically what you're doing like you're purposely ignorant about the fact that this is negatively affecting you but go off queen come up in different ways um and for me it comes up often in like seeing my body really negatively or like being extra critiquing of my body because you know it's an issue like that's really what it is like you're you're deep down like in your subconscious you're knowing that there's an issue but like somehow you're trying to force it out and that's really not how it works like if you know it's wrong there's going to be some parts of you going I shouldn't be doing this. This is an issue. Like, why am I doing this to myself? Like, come on, man. This is a bad decision. You know that these things are affecting you. And instead of, like, actually going through and dissecting and, like, understanding why these things are bad, you're just kind of, like, going through and going, fuck it. Like, I'm fat. It is what it is. Fat liberation. Beautiful. I am beautiful. Fuck you. Like, that's what I'm hearing, basically. Like, you can ignore it for as long as you want, but it doesn't mean that the issues aren't there. They are there, and they're going to continuously get worse. Um, so that may be you, that might not be you, but, um, this summer I'm going to be wearing less clothes. Hallelujah. Wear less clothes. Hashtag show off the body. hundred percent. I mean, do it. It's hot. It's going to be ridiculous. Like I do, I'm living in an area right now where it's like 98 degrees out. It's crazy. But, uh, if you have to wear less clothes in order to stay satiated or satisfied out into the weather, which even then doesn't even really work, um, go ahead and do it, but just acknowledge that you're literally stacking double or triple the amount of weight on your body so if your end goal is to be less hot being fat is going to make you hotter 100 percent. not even in the good way either not in like the damn she hot but in the damn she hot oh damn ooga booga one of those types of things so if your goal is to become less hot you should probably lose weight but i guess that's like too hard for you or maybe it's just too much to ask i guess i'm not really sure but yeah, losing weight would be incentivized if you want to become cooler of a person. <laughs> In order to become less hot, you become hot, if that makes any sense. I am going to be wearing string bikinis Ew. more. And I wear string bikinis a lot. So more is just, can we do it? Yes, we can. Um, but this summer... You I'm could tell she's like... <laughs> She's saying this and going, oh, wait, am I going to look terrible in this? Am I going to look gross wearing these? Oh, man, maybe I am going to like you. You can hear the hesitation when she said that. She was so confident when she said it, too. Like, oh, yeah, I'm going to wear string bikinis. Wait, am I like <laughs> you could see it on her face that she was like actually contemplating whether or not it was a good idea to do that. String bikinis more. And I wear string that's like somebody going like, no, I will suck that dick. Oh, wait, like it's one of those bikinis a lot. So more is just can we do it yes we can Bob um, the built but this summer i want to do more fat swims out Ew. in lakes on public lands um fat swim is so beautiful and lovely and also like we can take up space in do other it. places um so 
I will be taking up space outside on the trail. I like easy walks. <laughs> that It's just interesting how these people have like these goals and they want to do certain things like going on nature walks, swimming, doing all this like activity stuff in the summertime, which is the best time to do it since it's like hot and it's like actually nice out. But it's just interesting to me how they get to these goals when they could easily have these things be more satisfying to them if they lost weight so they can actually participate in more strenuous activities that are more satisfying, right? Instead of saying like, oh, you know, I'm just going to take it easy. I'm going to take like, you know, I'm going to go on these nature walks, but I'm going to have to stop like every two minutes because I'm perpetually out of breath because I'm literally walking through the woods or whatever like it would be way more sustainable if you just chose to lot lose weight and then do those activities after but i mean anything is better i guess anything is good for you might be considered i'll take a win where i can get it but not really um i will be taking space swimming in lakes swimming in any waterfall i can get my hands on um location scouting i will be wearing tube tops and tank tops Beautiful. i will be wearing shorts i will have my booty out a little Whoa. bit and i hope that you all right guys that's the end of the video today so i hope everybody enjoyed today's video it's a little bit of a quicker one but i'm very 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 busy today so i hope you guys don't mind this quick one uh you know quickies are good too right dude i prefer them actually i prefer not taking three hours doing stuff like i will indulge in the art of oral sex for a prolonged period of time but like sometimes i got other stuff to do and at this particular moment in time that stuff is transpiring but anyway you're a beautiful amazing organism of a human being i wish to bestow upon you all the love affection and joy that i can possibly give to you at any given point in time um thank you for enjoying today's video if you did i'd appreciate very big leave a like comment subscribe sharing the video all that stuff i'd really appreciate tremendously please let me know what you think about my tan down below i'm actually tanned up now as you can see i am melanated through the roof let me know what you guys think about that if you watch the video in its entirety and or you're here right now leave it down below by typing in tanned because i have more melanin i know it's not real and i know it's not like actual melanin it's like the sun melanin or whatever you want to call it but regardless on that i'm becoming a little bit more spicy i'm becoming a little bit more cultured if you know what i'm talking about people have mistaken me for other things now no they haven't but they might who knows in a few months maybe like if i tan up for a little bit more maybe somebody might think i'm haitian or another form of black guy i don't know dude regardless you're a beautiful person i really care for you you're so amazing i know you save your money i know you use your money for efficient things but it's okay to use your money for what you want to use it for like star wars toys um which i have gotten a few and we're gonna look at them on stream in a few days because uh, my birthday's coming up and people have bought me Star Wars toys because, like, I don't really, I guess I'm a fucking child and I don't really, like, like, I don't really care, you know? Like, I know a lot of people have um, things that they enjoy and I thought I wanted shoes for a little bit. And I was like, I'm going to buy shoes and they're going to be Jordans because I, I kind of need shoes. I've been wearing the same shoes for, like, literally months, like, almost two years at this point for these same shoes. But they still fit and they still wear, like, they're still fine. But I thought I wanted shoes, but then I was like, nah, I just prefer Star Wars toys. So I told people to buy me Star Wars toys, and now I have Star Wars toys coming, and we're going to review them on live stream. So if you want to tune in on that, I'm going to be titling the stream Reviewing Star Wars toys or something like that. I don't know. Regardless, you're a beautiful person. I love you. I care for you. You're so amazing. If you want to check out my social media, it'll be linked down below in the description. Super active on Instagram, super active on Discord, not so much on Twitter, but you can follow me on all that stuff. Link down below. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys. Peace.